Hello, you are on the Alice Reddit Stories channel. More than 90% watch my videos without a subscription. Subscribe to the channel so we always stay in touch. Enjoy watching. My boyfriend, 31 ex drug addict and smoker, and I, 21, have been together for a little over a year. We both have depression and anxiety. But through communication and love we both manage. I'm still not sure about his past, but it sure does sound traumatic. So I'll give you what I know. Him and his ex were a teen couple, they ended up having a daughter. While still in high school, he was the only father to visit his daughter in the school daycare. When he was about 19, he would be working his ass off trying to support his baby mama and his child. I'm not sure how it all went down, but his ex revoked all parenting rights from him. In his 30s there were scholarships available for him to go to college. So he moved to my hometown. Fast forward to me. I met him in August after I just broke up with an online narcissist relationship. I had been running a veggie stand and my inventory was stored in my living room. I have been living there for about a year or so. I felt caved in, drowning, especially after a breakup. My intrusive thoughts were not helping. My support system was lacking at the time. School finally started up again, a mental escape. We met, I'll say I was crushing on him from the very beginning. We made small talk, shared some music. Then our class started. After our first class, we ended up talking about cars. He used to drag race. I told him what I drove, what engine it had, and that it was my mom's first car. We went back to my place so he could see it, it was a small town, I walked to class, also it was hot that day I didn't want to walk. We ending up talking outside for a while. I remember almost passing out from the heat before asking him inside. I apologized for what my living room looked like. I remember he said, nah, don't worry about it. At least you have furniture. We continued talking. Then the topic of our sex lives came up. He's been with people. I haven't. I thought I was going to die a virgin and not make it past 19, this goes further. Then my mom and my brother barged through the door. Luckily, our conversation ended. My family, when they hear the word boy, they're overprotective. Even though they don't realize how emotionally abusive they were. Long story. I try to make light of the situation, I say, I made new friend today. I defused the situation, they got what they needed and eventually left. We continued our conversation. He left about 9 o'clock that night. He has doggy. Then we had the next class together. And the next. We had every class together. Except for one. As each week passed, the closer I sat next to him. Till eventually, I sat next to him. It had been about a week. We planned to do homework together at his place. I went over after work. He owned the house that he lives in. Cutest German Shepherd. No furniture, but there was couch. We actually did the homework. Then we talked, ended up cuddling. I ended up losing my V-card. Three days later. I never left his house. I finally felt free. Then the winter months came around. He told me a little about his past. And how wants to be with me and try have a new life. So we tried. Fast forward a while. I got my certificate for school, just I'm finishing a couple of classes I wanted to take. I got him to quit smoking for a month. We tried, I was proud of him regardless. Not drink as much. A week ago. He tells me that he still loves her. And that he can't move on from someone he has a kid with. He made her hate him. He started crying. I've never seen him cry. I gave him a hug as I started to tear up myself. I sat back down. He told me that I should move on to someone that actually cares about me. Someone that will give me what I want. That he doesn't care if I bring another man home to sleep with. That he'll sleep on the couch so I could have the room. It doesn't hurt me that he cares for his ex, it didn't hurt me that he said he didn't care about me, what hurt is when he said I could sleep with someone else. In his own bed. I figured it was just his depression talking, I know what it's like, I've said some hateful things, but I still care. 
so I continued telling him I love him. He never said it back. I continued to smile for him. Yesterday, he got home from work and I had supper ready. He went on a cigarette run, I figured he would be back within like 10 minutes, he had the dog, too. He had been gone for three hours, and I started to panic, so I cleaned. I called him numerous times he didn't pick up, his phone was on silent. It doesn't vibrate. I eventually found him at a friend's house. We both went outside. I don't remember most of our conversation because of the panic attack amnesia. But, he said again that I'm better off moving on. I asked him to tell me that he loved me. I remember crying driving back to our home. My voice is hoarse from screaming. I remember at one point of our relationship, he said I don't want to fuck up this relationship, you've been good to me. That line has just been playing on repeat in my head. I, 24F, met a man, 26M, let's call him Harry, in the summer of 2021, we met online and met up. I still remember that day and how easily we clicked and just talked for hours, we went home that day and talked on the phone, this continued for the next two weeks when all of a sudden his replies were more and more delayed, after a few days of this we sat down and talked and he told me he wasn't mentally ready for a relationship as his mother had just been diagnosed with cancer. He wanted to look after her and be there, for which I completely understood at the time, I told him I would be there for him as a friend if he needed anything. After this conversation we still talked, but we were careful not to get too attached and we both admitted it was hard, he would have days where he would be really distant and days where he would be very open, this was starting to cause me a lot of anxiety. He would make me feel confused as he would say he didn't want a relationship, but then we would talk and have this connection that we just could not ignore. After a few months of back and forth like this my mental health was suffering and I was slipping into depression and decided for my own sake not to reply to his messages and give myself a break. After a few days of not talking I realized he had removed me off his socials, not blocked but just removed me and unfollowed me. I was upset and confused, but I never said anything to him, I felt in a sense this was better for us. The separation hit me hard, I lost weight, I would just stay in bed and barely talk to anyone, and I know Harry was the one that triggered all this. When I met him those few weeks where everything was good was the happiest few weeks of my life. I always used to be very skeptical about the idea of love and finding your person, but the day I met him it all made sense. So when he left even though I am cringing as I type her this it really did feel like my world became so dull, dark and grey. I did the usual, cut my hair went on girls trips and over time, slowly, my feelings for this man slowly mellowed. Took me a good 6 months, but I did eventually start going on other dates. I always ended up searching for the same spark and was never able to find it, that instant connection. Recently I met up with a man, 26M, let's call him John who has been pursuing me for about a year. I decided to have no expectations when going on this date, but this man pleasantly surprised me. And we met again and again, and each time we met my feelings for him were going stronger. This man respects me and clearly cares a great deal for me. And I was finally feeling like I may have found someone that I can start to build a relationship with. Then three days ago out of the blue Harry messages me. At first, I thought I was dreaming, and then I realized, nope this is real. I didn't know whether to reply or to just leave it, but after a few hours of deliberating I did say hi and asked how he and his mum were. Harry told me his mum is recovering now and asked me to meet him again and carry things off where we left. After a friendly exchange I ended the conversation as I felt very overwhelmed and didn't know what to say. Things with John have been going well up until this point, me and John are not exclusive and are still getting to know each other, but I still feel this huge guilt for even wanting to talk to Harry. Me and Harry never had a proper chance and now he is back I don't know what I should do, I feel really bad that I am even considering this option as I know this will break John's heart, but I also know what my heart has been searching for ever since me and Harry parted ways. I feel like I'm stuck between two options and I don't know what to do, any help or advice would be much appreciated. So, just to get right to it, my fiancé picks his nose and eats the snot. Constantly. 
When I say constant, I mean it's rare that he is not doing it. For the first two years of our relationship we were long distance, and saw each other on the weekends. I suppose, because we weren't living together, most of our time together remained in a honeymoon phase of date nights, etc. I never noticed his habit until we moved in together last year. Suddenly, he started picking his nose and eating it almost all the time. Not in private, but even when I am directly looking at him. First time it happened, we were having a conversation and he started doing it while I was talking. I was shocked. Later that evening, I told him nauseates me and I find it disgusting, and he immediately became defensive, telling me it was a habit that he doesn't feel ashamed of. We discussed the possibility of OCD or nervous habits, and he seemed unwilling to work on changing them, and says he has grown to just accept his tics and quirks, and made me feel bad for not accepting him as well. I didn't know what to think. I don't have a lot of close friends, and I've been too embarrassed to tell anyone about it. I did seek the advice of a therapist, but she wasn't as shocked as I maybe expected her to be, and she just said a lot of people have a lot of gross habits, and sometimes picking a person means accepting them, even for the gross things. I also told one other friend, and they said, if that's the worst thing he's doing, then you have a keeper. So since those two conversations, I have been feeling like I have been blowing it out of proportion. That being said, I do feel like my attraction to him is fading, as he is constantly picking his nose and eating it. Can't make this shit up. Our sex life was struggling as is because he has very low libido, and I feel like his habit has killed most of my desire. I guess I need to vent to non-judgmental ears, and I feel embarrassed, and also could use advice. Besides this, and the low libido issue, our relationship is pretty strong and we are the best of friends. I find myself wishing he didn't have this tick, as I'm sure I'd feel much different. I am not sure if this is something I should push harder to work through, whether suggesting couples therapy, or even trying to accept it myself, or if it's time to break off an entire engagement. Because the guy couldn't stop picking his nose. As another side note, he duns do this in public. Only around me and by himself. So he can control it if he wanted to. TL, DR, fiancé has nasty habit of picking his nose and eating it constantly. It's a nervous tick, but he has no desire to change it. He doesn't care that I find it disgusting. Not sure if this is enough cause to break off the engagement. I could use some support slash advice as I have been embarrassed to tell people about this in my personal life. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel. There are a lot of interesting stories ahead of you.